Hi everyone, this is Casey with Dondoko Taiko. In late 2018, fellow Taiko member Corey and I began planning a trip to Japan for Dondoko Taiko. This would be a 10-day, 9-city itinerary. We planned extensively for this trip, which would have taken place in August of 2021. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to take the trip yet, but I didn't want all of this information to go to waste, so we will be sharing all of our information in a video series titled Explore Japan with Us. The information will be based on our planned trip, but should still be very informative for anyone planning a trip to Japan. I hope you enjoy the information and a look into the planning process. Hopefully, we will all be able to use this information soon when travel to Japan resumes. Welcome to the Explore Japan with Us series. In this video, we will give an overview of the preparations you will need to make for a trip to Japan. As the caption says, preparing for Japan shouldn't be difficult. In this video, we will use our experiences to help you prepare for a wonderful trip. We will be looking at this from the perspective of a first time traveler to Japan. So we will be discussing luggage, walking, weather, packing, money, phone and Wi-Fi, flight, and more. Being a highly populated island makes space a premium in Japan. As a result, accommodations for large luggage are not seen as much in Japan. In fact, a new restriction was placed on luggage for those riding the Shinkansen in May 2020. Large bags are no longer allowed on the Shinkansen and you must make a reservation for a certain seating area if your bag is between 160 and 250 centimeters. That's 63 to 98 inches. If you don't make a reservation and you're caught with a bag over 160 centimeters, you will be fined 1,000 yen. That's about $10. So bags that are 160 centimeters or 63 inches or less are the best for Japan travel. Another difficulty with large bags is the layout of most stations in Japan. Most train and subway stations rely heavily on stairs as the main means to move people from one area to another. Some subway exits don't even have the option of an elevator. As you can see from the Asakusa Station map, of the 13 exits available, only two have elevators. Believe me, it's no fun carrying a large, heavy bag up or down all of those stairs. Another problem is the distance you may be required to walk while carrying your luggage. On our planned itinerary to Japan, we will walk from the terminal to our train, not too far, and then after riding the train to Tokyo, we will have to walk from Keisei Ueno Station to Ueno Station to catch the Shinkansen. It's not that far with a light bag, but I wouldn't want to do it with a big heavy bag. So what kind of bag should I bring? The setups that you see pictured here are almost perfect. A small carry-on size rolling bag with a backpack or day pack. You want something that you can move quickly from rolling to carrying. Also, keep in mind that you may be lifting this bag often, so the lighter the weight of the bag itself, the better. I would recommend seven pounds or less if you can find it. Some other types of bags you may think of bringing are a camera bag for protecting your camera, shopping bags or carrying souvenirs, a foldable checked bag. A foldable checked bag comes in handy when you realize at the end of your trip that you have more things to take home than you have room in your bag. As in many European countries, many of the best attractions in Japan can only be reached on foot. In fact, some of the walking may be very vigorous. So here are a few tips to make your trip more comfortable. Start walking every day to build up your endurance and don't forget to climb some stairs too. Make sure you have a good pair of walking shoes for the trip and remember in Japan you will be taking your shoes off and putting them on quite a bit. So make sure that you can do that easily. The longest walk we have planned is a little more than two miles and will include some inclines, climbing, and stairs. Being in Japan, especially Kyoto, reminded me a lot of Houston, Texas, hot and muggy. We are planning to travel to Japan during the summer, and as you can see, 
The temperatures in Japan are much lower than Texas in the summer, but the humidity is much higher. In addition, many places in Japan, including train stations, restaurants, and hotels, may not be air conditioned. I would spend some time outside over the summer to acclimate your body to the additional heat. If you are okay in Texas heat, you should be okay in Japan. And of course, don't forget to dress for the weather. Cool, moisture wicking fabrics are a must, and you won't want to forget your hat, bandana, fan, and a water bottle. Here are a few Japan specific things you might want to bring for your trip. You will need a pouch for cash, ID, tickets, passes, and a small coin purse. Because you are a foreigner, you will need to show your passport for many things, including duty free shopping. You will also be using several passes and lots of cash, most of which is coins in Japan. So, having a quick way to get to all of these items is essential. The ID lanyard at the bottom left of the picture is our recommendation, but there are many great options. Check out the Pack Hacker video in the cards above for more suggestions. As we've discussed earlier, wearing the right clothes and shoes is essential. I would also have hand sanitizer, tissues, and a bandana or towel handy. Many restrooms in Japan do not offer soap or towels to dry your hands and on rare occasions may not have toilet paper. If you have electrical items that you plan to bring that have three prongs, you will need to purchase an adapter that has two prongs, as Japanese outlets don't all have three prongs. I recommend a power strip with an adapter. This allows you to charge all of your items together in one area so that you don't forget something at the hotel. And yes, you will need cash. More about this later. And it wouldn't hurt to learn a few phrases in Japanese and carry a book of simple phrases or be prepared with a translation app on your phone. Japan is a very cash based society. You will be able to use credit and debit cards in most hotels, train stations, and shopping centers. But almost everywhere else requires cash. If you can, it is best to exchange your money prior to arriving in Japan, as your local bank will give you the best exchange rate. If you do decide to exchange your money in Japan, please note that the kiosks at airports and train stations have the worst rates. You will get a better rate using an ATM. 7 Eleven and post offices have the most reliable ATMs for foreign cards. Don't forget, to make sure your credit cards and debit cards don't charge an extra fee for foreign use. It is very common for a credit or debit card to charge an extra 3% fee for exchanging your money. So your $300 ATM withdrawal or other purchase can become $320 with ATM fees and the extra 3% fee. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it can add up on every transaction you make taking you over your intended budget. When exchanging your money, please make sure that you ask for the majority of your money in small bills, mostly 1,000 yen notes. This is the smallest bill in Japan. Just as in the US, larger bills can be very hard to break in local establishments. You should get a reloadable transportation integrated circuit card, IC card for short, for your trip which will alleviate the need for cash in some situations. The Suica IC card is one of the most popular and can be used in Japan for most modes of transportation. The Suica card is also accepted at many vending machines and in most convenience stores. See the link in the description below for an explanation of the Suica card. Many buses only accept an IC card, a bus pass, or cash. When using cash, be aware that the bus drivers do not give change, so if you don't have exact change for your fare, you may end up paying $10 for a $2 fare. Some buses do have change machines, so make sure that you are ready before you board the bus. In this chart, we've estimated how much money you will need for each type of transaction, cash, IC, or credit for the planned itinerary. As you can see, you will have quite a few cash transactions in each destination. 
On a trip like this, it's very important to stay connected with others in your group, especially if you don't speak or understand Japanese. Equally important is the ability to find your way if you do get separated from the group. Having the use of your phone can be vital in both situations. So, what are some of the options? You can use your phone as usual if your provider has service in Japan, but make sure you ask them about fees or slowdown times. You can rent a portable Wi Fi for the trip. This can cost from $50 to $100, but it usually works with up to 10 devices, so it can be shared on the trip. You can purchase a Japanese SIM card to use in your phone. This is very nice because you don't have to carry an extra item or remember to return it before leaving Japan. Some carriers also give you the option to have a Japanese phone number while in Japan. This can be very important if you wish to make reservations for some restaurants as they only accept reservations with a Japanese callback number. Because you will spend most of your day touring Japan, you will want to bring a portable charger to make sure that your phone doesn't go dead during the day. You'll probably be taking pictures, videos, looking up directions and destination information, and maybe even translating some Japanese. And this takes a huge toll on your phone's battery. There are several good options available on Amazon and at Walmart. The flight to Japan can be between 11 and 14 hours. If you are not prepared, this long flight can ruin your first day in Japan. So, a couple of reminders for long haul flights. Take steps to minimize jet lag. Make sure you stay hydrated and get some sleep on the plane. In order to sleep on the plane, you will need to be comfortable. So, dress for comfort or bring comfortable clothes to wear during the flight. Bring or wear layers as it can get very cold on flights. Bring earplugs or noise canceling headphones so that you can block out all of the activity on the plane. If you have poor circulation, invest in a pair of compression socks and don't be afraid to get up and walk around during the flight. Bring snacks that will fit your personal eating preferences. Don't eat the plane food if you know it will upset your stomach or cause a reaction in your body. Don't forget to look for special diet options when booking your flight. And lastly, bring personal hygiene items and a change of clothes in your carry on bag. Brushing your teeth, washing your face, and putting on fresh clothes helps your body adjust to the new day in Japan and just makes you feel better. Lastly, a few other useful bits of knowledge when traveling to Japan. If you are staying at an Airbnb or with a homestay family, using a tour guide or participating in a free community event like sake tasting or kimono wearing, You might want to bring a gift or omiyage for the people who hosted or guided you. Omiyage are similar to host and hostess gifts. You bring them to show appreciation. Omiyage don't have to be foreign items either. Airports, train stations, and many tourist attractions will have omiyage available. Giving omiyage is customary in Japan, and while not strictly enforced for foreigners, it's always appreciated. There is a video on what to buy for omiyage linked below. Tipping is not a thing in Japan. The closest thing to tipping in Japan would be giving an omiyage. Don't worry, wages in Japan are not dependent on tips, so your server, bellboy, and taxi driver are not depending on that extra money. Also, keep in mind that Japanese customs are different from those in America. So, even a well meant offer of a tip may be taken as a slight. Many price tags in Japan show the price of the item and the price including tax. So, if you're not in a duty free shop or shopping duty free, then use the larger amount when calculating your total. Many more shops are offering a duty free option for travelers. Look for the duty free sign in the shop window and make sure you let the cashier know that you are shopping duty free. Some stores will ring up your items without tax, and others will ring up your purchase as usual, but you can take your receipt to a counter within the store to receive a refund for the tax. Duty free is only for items not to be used in Japan, but if you are purchasing a lot of souvenirs at one time, it can be a big savings. There is an informative article about duty free shopping linked in the description below. Thank you for watching. 
I hope this video is helpful when planning your next trip to Japan. All videos and resources mentioned are linked in the description box below.